Hey Valley, welcome back to another math video. Tonight we're going to talk, learn how you multiply fractions without using a calculator. But first, let's start off with the question of the day. Has any U.S. president ever had their body exhumed? Hmm, that means dug up from the grave and examined closely. Yikes. Officially our target for today is 5.58. I can multiply fractions without a calculator. Let's do this thing. All right. The problem du jour. The average lifespan of a house cat is four-fifths that of a lion. The average lifespan of a lion is 15 years. Find the average lifespan of a house cat. All right, well, here's a lion, 15, and four-fifths of that will be a house cat. So I need to multiply four-fifths times 15. Well, if you did this in a calculator, it would be easy because you know that four-fifths is 0.8. You could just take 0.8 times 15 equals 12. Done. Unfortunately, we have to learn how to multiply fractions too. And it's really not that tough. Watch what I did. Here's my 4 fifths times 15. Now, 15 over 1 is the same as 15 because 15 divided by 1 is 15. Now, just multiply straight across. Don't worry about common denominators. 4 times 15 is 60. 5 times 1 is 5. So I've got 60 over 5, but I'm not done. I have to reduce that, and that's an improper fraction. So let's divide by 5. 60 divided by 5 is 12. 5 divided by 5 is 1. I still have an improper fraction, but I know that 12 over 1 is the same as 12. Congratulations, you've just multiplied your first set of fractions. Let's take a look at some vocabulary you might want to refresh yourself on. All right, numerator. The numerator is the number on top. It tells you how many pieces that you have. The denominator is the number on the bottom. It tells how many pieces in a whole. So you have one piece out of two in a whole. One out of two. Kind of sounds like a ratio. All right. Now, you want to multiply 1 half times 10. Well, we know that 1 half of 10 is 5, but look how easily it is to do. You put the 10 over 1. 1 times 10 is 10. 2 times 1 is 2. Hey, what's 10 divided by 2? 5. And just like that, you've multiplied your second set of fractions. Okay, let's take a look at the step-by-step -step instructions of how I to do what I've just done. It's really a three-step process. First, 2 thirds times 1 eighth. Here's my 2 thirds and here's my 1 eighth. If you can reduce, if possible, it'll make your life a little bit easier. So look at I can't divide 2 and 3 by any numbers, but now I can divide diagonally. I can divide this number by 2, which is 1 times 2. I can divide this number by 2, which is 4 times 2, right? So now I've rewritten my fractions. I've got 1 third, here's my 1 and my 3, and 1 fourth, here's my 1 and here's my fourth. Remember, I divided by 2, so I've rewritten those. Multiply straight across. 1 times 1 is 1. 3 times 4 is 12. And just like that, you got 1 12th. Rewrite or reduce if necessary. Hmm. 1 12th is in simplest form, so you don't have to do that. I want to show you what would happen if you didn't reduce up front. It still works. Let's just say you didn't catch that 2 and 8 were both divisible by 2. You just multiplied straight across. 2 times 1 is 2. 3 times 8 is 24. You've got 2 24ths. You can reduce that if you divide them both by 2, to 1 12th. So you're going to get to your answer. It just depends upon when you reduce. I tried to do it up front, the first step, and I always check at the end, too, just to make sure. Okay? All right. Let's move on to another example. 9 tenths times 5 6. Well, here's my original fractions in blue, 9 tenths and 5 6. You can see I've divided a whole bunch of things here. I divided... 9 by 3, and I got 3. I divided 6 by 3, and I got 2. So I reduced diagonally. I also reduced diagonally here. I divided both by 5. That's 1 times 5. This is 2 times 5. So when I rewrite it, I've got 3 over 2 times 1 over 2. Get it? Multiply. 3 times 1, 3. 2 times 2, 4. 3 fourths. And again, if this piece here is messing you up or you're a little confused about that reducing early, you can do it the other way. Just measure, multiply straight across. 9 times 5 is 45. 10 times 6 is 60. 
Now, you just have to reduce this number here. Honestly, if you reduce 45, you divide by 15, you're going to get 3. If you divide 60 by 15, you're going to get 4. It'll come out to be the exact same fraction. Okay? All right. So don't let this reducing up here throw you. But I'll do a couple more examples, and I think you'll, you'll be a, a master of it before you know it. All right. My last example. 7 eighths times 4. All right. Let's just take and move this, these guys around here just a little bit. So I'm gonna, I gotta make him longer to move, I guess. Oops. There we go. So here's my problem, seven eighths times four. Just move that four up, put a fraction bar in there. Come on, put a fraction. Where is he? I can't grab him. There we go, put the fraction bar in, put the one underneath it. Now you've made that into a fraction. All right, 7 eighths times 4 over 1. Well, I can divide these two numbers here by 4. 4 goes in there one time, 4 goes in there two times. So now I have new fractions, 7 halves times 1 over 1. And I love it when this happens. 7 times 1 is 7, 2 times 1 is 2. I've got 7 halves. Rewrite or reduce if necessary. Yeah, because that's improper fraction. So how do we do that? Well, if I take out groups of 2, because that's what a whole is, 2 out of 2, 7 minus 2 over 2, minus another 2 over 2, minus another 2 over 2, that's 3 holes. See them? 1, 2, 3. So I've got 3 holes, and I've got 1 left. Because 7 minus 2, minus 2, minus 2, that's minus 6 leaves you one left over, three halves. It's the same thing as seven halves, but it's a mixed number instead of an improper fraction. All right, time for you to try a couple. Multiply six eighths times two. Go ahead and pause the video. I'm back. All right, let's see how you did. Well, six eighths times two over one. I divided by two diagonally there. So now I've got one over one again and six over four. Sweet! So 6 times 1 is 6, 4 times 1 is 4, I've got 6 fourths. I can reduce that to 3 halves really easily by dividing by 3. But then I still got to figure that mixed number out, because make it into a mixed number, because that's an improper fraction. So here's 3 halves, I take out 1 whole, 2 over 2. I've still got 1 left, because 3 minus 2 is 1. So I've got 1 whole right there, and then 1 half remaining. You okay? All right. Try this one. Last problem before the ticket. What is six ninths times one third? Go ahead and pause. All right, we're back. Six ninths times one third. Well, I can divide six by three. Goes in there two times. I can divide three by three. Goes in there one time. So I've got rewrite, rewriting this. I've got two ninths and one over one again. 2 times 1 is 2. 9 times 1 is 9. You with me? I thought so. 2 nines. Simplest form. I can't reduce it any further. All right? Let's go ahead. Take a look at the ticket to the show. 3 fifths times 2 thirds and 3 fourths times 1 fifth. And I'll pause just a second while you write those down. Okay. Let's see what the answer to the trivia question is. Has any U.S. president ever had their body exhumed? Yes, actually. Zachary Taylor's body was exhumed 140 years after he died. They wanted to see if he had been poisoned, and he wasn't. But when they dug up the body, they were able to look at some of the hair and the bones and test that to see if there was any arsenic in it. That's what they think they poisoned them with. And it turns out they didn't. But I was shocked that they did, they did it 140 years after he had died. All right. Well, thanks for listening. I hope you feel pretty good and pretty confident about multiplying fractions. And I'll see you tomorrow at school.